right. Yeah, I know the public theater. You remember that open call for hair? Yeah, I went. <laughs> <laughs> but I was at the end of the line, so I didn't get in. It was OK, though. Uh, yeah, the experience here has been really interesting. Um, it's one of the few places I found myself happy in a long time. I'm, I'm kind of manic depressive. So um, <laughs> this is one of the few places I've been able to maintain like a healthy manic phase and not do stupid <laughs> things. I don't really take meds. Um, obviously, I'm here because I don't trust the government. And uh, I feel the government doesn't actually work for the people. I feel like they're kind of just working for this like game called money. And that's why I don't take medication, because I don't think that they're actually trying to help me with the medication. They just want to take my money. <laughs> well, I've never actually been diagnosed, but a therapist proposed the idea once, and I've always just kind of assumed. I mean, it's fairly obvious to me. You know, sometimes I'm just like, yeah, blah, 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 and I can't stop talking. And sometimes, you know, it's like I'm sad for no reason. But I'm also kind of a Buddhist a little bit. So <laughs> the Buddhist idea is just, you know, that everything is impermanent. So, you know, if I'm sad, I just am like, well, this is going to be impermanent too. Just relax and it'll, you know, be over. Um, yeah, I've just been a lot more balanced since I've been here. Well, I haven't felt like I needed to start crying hysterically. <laughs> um, no, I'm not marching today. I'm going to stay in the park during the march. Well, one, because I go to school and I'm scared of being arrested and missing a day. Um, yeah, I wake up early and I take the train to Brooklyn. I go to St. Francis College, which I don't like being at, so I might drop out. Um, St. Francis is just like one of those schools you see advertised on the train, you know. St. Francis, the small school with big dreams. Nobody has any dreams there. Everybody's just boring and dumb. <laughs> yeah, I sleep in camp, friends. Um, the camps all have different names, um, at least in this area. Uh, the camp behind us is Camp Namaste. It's gotten a lot more... <laughs> You know it? Yeah. Um, it's gotten a lot more crowded, though. A lot of bums from Union Square are coming. And you know, just people I know from outside of here who I know are crazy are coming and just like spreading negative energy, in my opinion. You know? Like psycho, like thieves. Like there's this one kid who I know has stolen money from one of my friends. So every time I see him, I just give him a dirty look. I scared him off. But yeah, you know, I feel like these people are my family. You know, we share. You know, my mother thinks I'm crazy when I talk about my political views. But, you know, when I'm here, it's like everybody's like, yeah, you know, I totally know what you're talking about. It makes perfect sense. And I'm like, you know, it feels really good to feel like I'm not crazy. You know, I go to this like small Catholic school. I proposed the idea of not using money in society. And this girl like freaked out. She's like, well, how am I supposed to pay my bills? <laughs> she failed to recognize that if we live in a society without money, there wouldn't be bills, you know, but. Maybe I'm not crazy. Maybe I'm just smarter than her. I don't know. <laughs> I feel that. You know, it's like ridiculous because you have to have a job in order to survive in this society. So why are there not enough jobs? You know, that's not fair. It's just really disappointing that you kind of grow up assuming that you're going to be able to get some kind of a job. You know, you get told if you don't go to college, they're not going to be able to get a good job. But you still expect to be able to, you know, live in like a shitty apartment and eat like shitty food, you know. <laughs> At least you have that. People can't even afford that anymore, and I'm not okay with that. Hey, no, man. Come on. Sorry. No, you, this is right on my face, man. You're not sorry. You're not looking, and you're certainly not listening. Oh, you should keep walking before you step on mine too, okay? God. See, and that is what, here's another thing. People need to be more aware of what they're doing in general. <laughs> Hi, what's up? You know, in society in general, people don't know. You people don't think about how their actions affect other people because people are so fucking selfish. You know, I'm not talking about that guy. You know, he made an honest mistake. If you want to know what we're talking about, that guy just stepped on my friend's painting. But the point is that, like, people don't think about how their actions are going to affect other people because everyone is influenced by, like, TV, where it's like, me, 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 you know, Facebook. Facebook is about saying, like, hey, look at me. Aren't I cool? Ha, ha, ha. Fuck Facebook. Fuck Mark Zuckerberg, you know? Please put that line in. You know, whatever actor does this should have a whole monologue where they're just like, fuck you, Mark Zuckerberg. We don't like you. It destroys the real human connection. 
Yeah, I met my first boyfriend on Facebook. That's so romantic, not. <laughs> no, no, not him. No, that boyfriend I told you about, you know, we're still friends. I met him in high school. And, you know, I love you, Connor Dawson. I still love you. Come back. <laughs> Connor Dawson's my ex-boyfriend. He knows. Yeah, he knows I still love him, so it doesn't matter. You know, he still loves me, too. He just sent me a text the other day that said, I miss you, you know? I'm just going to front and pretend like I don't still love you. We still talk like friends, though. Okay, cool. Was that theatrical enough for you?